welcome to PhD with Women on It, Hack the Future. My name is Beata Young, and today's Positivity Hack Delivered will be by our guest, Alison Falk. Today's topic, what makes a good project product manager? Episode 50 starts here. Let me remind you, this is a grassroots community that focuses on women on IT, an inclusive forum of women in technology, startups, and female leaders who are supported by men as well. And I bring heart to that hustle because empathy is my mojo. And empathy is critical when you are becoming a good product manager. In today's episode, we are going to learn how to become a perfect product manager and what makes a good product manager. To grow and thrive, business leadership must embrace a diversity of thoughts, backgrounds and viewpoints. Gone are the days of cookie cutter management. What all product managers have in common is that they've mastered a handful of hard skills, including customer research, the ability to identify market opportunities and product modeling, modeling and road mapping, as well as the essential soft skills at PM needs, including strategic thinking, leadership, communication, and collaboration skills, and especially empathy. Alison Falk is a highly organized, collaborative, and deadline-oriented product manager, award-winning founder, and international speaker whose areas of expertise include business and technical acumen, brand maturation, and strategic data-driven planning. She is the founder of Women in Tech, PGH, a nonprofit that prioritizes a holistic approach to learning emerging skills and technologies. Alison is also an international speaker and half not crime advocate. With six years of demonstrated leadership experience, Alice, Alison, has designed, developed, and organically scaled tech-related products. Alison, tell me, where in the world are you? Hi, Vera. Um, right now, I am in Boston, Massachusetts, in my apartment. But you have been traveling a bit, right? You are involved in many uh, initiatives, including Women in Tech. Can you tell us a, a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So I started Women in Tech Pittsburgh back in 2017. I was really lost in my career, didn't know about technology, and I saw a lot of people transitioning into tech um, who didn't go to school for tech. And so I was thinking, you know, after graduating college, maybe I need to go back and be a server at a restaurant again because I really don't know what to do. I don't know how to get a job and I had nobody in my immediate circle who could help guide me through that. So I ended up enrolling in a boot camp, and from there I became a software developer and I got my first role. Um, I was the only woman on my team and I had a lot of different hardships that I felt like my peers weren't able to relate to. So I started Women in Tech Pittsburgh to start talking about how we can solve some of these problems, how I could share my journey to help other women break into technology, and to also highlight the women in tech that uh, were from Pittsburgh to showcase the amazing work that they were doing, as well as kind of dispel this myth of like, you don't need to be a programmer to be in tech. You can be successful without being technical. Um, since then, Women in Tech Pittsburgh has developed into this really amazing, um, holistically driven um, grassroots uh, nonprofit organization with a very amazing team, a really amazing founding team. And we offer a lot of educational resources and programming to uh, help folks break into the tech industry. That's uh, quite a lot of data, quite a lot of movement and quite a lot of uh, activities you've done. You told me, though, that it, this is the first speaking engagement after a year ago. Is yeah. Right? Yeah. So I actually used to speak a lot. Um, I used to live in Taiwan. So um, when I was there, I did a lot of speaking uh, for my master's program and um, got to present a lot of the research I did to different journals um, and different committees. Coming back to um, 
Pittsburgh and breaking into technology, I started to explore really unique areas of the field, such as the intersections of sex and technology. And this really relates to um, a lot of different areas. For me, it was really focused on cybersecurity, sex education, making sure that things that we were sending over the internet uh, were being discussed, although taboo, it's very important to keep people safe in this field and raise awareness on how they can keep themselves safe. Um, so. Through that, I also got a lot of speaking engagements and I got to speak at Google, I got to speak at Cisco, and I also got to speak at a Berlin Film Festival, which was really awesome. So I did uh, get a lot of exposure uh, uh, through that research. And that's worth mentioning that actually, thanks to your engagement with uh, Women in Sex Tech, this is how I first saw you, met you, and this is how I thought, well, I would love to have you on the show. But let's go into the PhD topic, how to become a great product manager. Let's ask you a question. According to McKinsey and Company, product managers spend around 18% of their time defining a product strategy. Is that the thing for you as well? Is that 18% or maybe a different percentage? And what about the rest of the work? So for me, I don't know if I could really nail down a specific percentage of how much time I spend defining a strategy, but I can say that every week for me is different. Every week there's a new problem that I have to solve. And that's something that I personally really love digging into. So I spend a lot of time in meetings. I spend a lot of time trying to um, learn about how other people think, learn about the customer and their workflow and understand how to communicate these issues with other people so that I can kind of follow the breadcrumbs and uh, figure out what the best solution would be to create value in solving a problem for our user. So in in a day to day, I would say I spend about 80% of my time in meetings. Um, and the rest of the time I spend kind of strategizing, brainstorming and thinking and, and trying to organize my thoughts so that I can present them with others to allow them to kind of poke holes in uh, the solution that I want to provide and, and come up with a uh, the best solution uh, for uh, our users. So how did you get into product management? This is a great question. So I, this, this career is something that kind of fell into my lap. I had no idea that it had existed. And when I talk with other women who are also product managers, I ask them the same thing. I'm like, how did you know about this career? And they also said it was something that I stumbled upon myself, but a little bit later in my career. And I, you know, went into technology under the assumption that the only role you can get in tech and be successful is to be a programmer or a software developer. And so I did a coding bootcamp and upon becoming a software engineer, I realized I absolutely hate coding. I don't like sitting at a desk and trying to code. I don't, you know, like doing the same thing every day. Um, I'm not that type of person. I, I like to have a lot of things going on. I like interacting with a lot of people. I like being able to solve problems and really bring in like my background experience in, um, you know, just creativity and international business and use that uh, in my career to feel fulfilled. So um, I was trying out all of these different careers. I was in operations. I was dabbling in like data science. I was dabbling in, you know, I was heavily dabbling in cybersecurity. Um, and I just continued to feel like almost angry that I knew this wasn't the career for me, but I was starting to feel like maybe there's not a career out there for me. And 